Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. I want to take a minute out of my day and out of your day to just tell you one thing that might really help you. This is something that someone taught me. Uh, just It was a video I watched on YouTube and I was just like, wow, that's a good idea. Uh, the, this is the concept. The concept is learn to worship during difficult times, during difficult moments. Learn what worshiping is. If you can learn, if you can learn to worship when you're about to blow a gasket or when your uh, day is difficult or when you get bad news or any of those times, if you can have the discipline to praise God during those times, to pray during those times, because I guarantee you, y'all, you are not going to automatically want to sit here and say, thank you, God, that my, my husband's been in a car wreck. You're not, that is not your human inclination. I promise you that. But because we are bearers of the spirit within us as believers in Jesus Christ, then we learn that hard things create endurance and perseverance and faith and all of those things. So we obey during those moments and we can also learn the elements of worship during the good times so that when the bad times happen we know what that looks like and we can make ourselves worship we can pull up those praise songs from the back of our minds and in our hearts that will sustain us during that those difficult times so worshiping when you're by yourself and I'm not I'm not talking about worshiping by yourself in contrast to worshiping with a body of believers that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about you need and I need to daily worship our Lord for the sake of the relationship so what does that look like y'all tell me what how you do it because I know many of you are already doing this I can only share with you what I do and what has has transpired in my walk with God. And uh, then comment below. Share with us because we can glean a whole bunch of information if we just open our mouths and start talking to each other. So here's, here's what I do. I get up before the rest of my family does. Because the minute my family gets up, they always are. Then my time is allotted to them. So... I, so that's what I do. If you are a young mother, this may not work for you. You're going to have to learn to do a different technique. If you have young children and you've got to grab every little snippet of sleep that you can, then you probably need to ignore what I'm doing and find something else that works for you. That maybe, you know, what I'm going to tell you, these elements that you can plug in, doesn't matter when you do it or how you do it. Um, so that's what I do. Now, I began by... Um, I usually, the moment I get up, I say thank you to God. Thank you. I can even get out of bed by myself. Thank you that I can walk across the room without pain. Those are the things that I'm thankful for. And and so there's, there's an attitude of thankfulness to begin my day even before I'm really awake. I don't mind uh, making coffee and drinking coffee during my worship time with God. That is who I am and he and I are, we roll that way. I... I do not um, have any rigid uh, formula. If there's something on my heart or mind, then I just say, I, I, God, I got to bring this to you. I am very concerned about whatever it might be. Um, this we a new air conditioner we got to buy. So that you know that is the and I take everything to him. I do not edit my prayers. I do not I do not hold anything back from him because he already knows. He already knows what my concerns are, but when I verbalize them, it creates a time and space for us. It helps me to hear myself verbalize them and and he and I begin that communication process. You know the verse that says be still and know that I'm God. I think our brother Peter said that in his book. Uh you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure that that's not a psalm also from David. Should have looked that up before I started this video, but God just brought it to me. Be still and know that I'm God. That does not mean be still for just a minute out of your busy day. That means be still long enough that you know 
he is God and he's with you. Nearly like you can feel him. Not everybody's a feeler. Some people are analytical. They're thinkers. So they don't feel, they don't have that touchy-feely feel about God and the Holy Spirit. But they still know. They know he's there. So uh, what I have learned to do that it daily, I spend an hour and a half to two hours. I sing. Sometimes I sing my prayers. Sometimes I, I always read my Bible. Always spend time in the Word. For a little bit, I was doing it because I had this great streak going on on the Bible app. Not going to lie about that. But then I got to where it's like, I can't not feed myself that spiritual food from the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. Do not forget those, y'all. Always go to them. Psalms during times of trouble is always a good go-to, y'all. So that is uh, that's a given. Spend time reading. Spend time praying. Spend time singing. And, and I mean time. And even sometimes if you just get tired and you have to shut your eyes for a little bit, then right before you shut your eyes, just say, Father, is there anything you want to tell me in a dream or a vision? Because i got to shut my eyes for just a minute. It's okay to do that. He does not whack you in the head just because you're human. <laughs> and guess what? He knew you were going to do that anyway. So you're not surprising him. All right, so that's that's how you roll with God. That's how I roll with him. And once again, I hold nothing back. Anything that's bothering me, anything I'm happy about, it it's out there on the table. So, so that is the habit, okay? And the habit is a discipline, and, and that is what I love to do. It, it, it is a habit, and, but it is not a meaningless, mindless habit, if that makes sense. So when you get those times those phone calls mom i've been in a car wreck or uh dad uh i'm overdrawn at the bank and need you and you don't have enough money to put you, you know what i'm talking about you've got more month than money uh you your pregnancy kit test came back positive i mean y'all it's all it's the whole gamut of stuff when you have those moments where you're kind of shook shaken uh then then you need to remember worship worship now you're not going to be able probably to have a private place to worship sometimes you're in the emergency room during that time then go to the bathroom when you get a chance and shut the door and have some private time with God when we were moving my mother-in-law back in August uh, y'all you know it, I made a video about the good things that happened but all the in between the good stuff was like a really crappy crap show all right so that's what was happening and i found a little corner i found a corner to worship where no one would bother me for a little bit uh so i just listened to song praise songs on my phone i prayed i you know when my when when like i said my husband was in a car wreck on the way to the emergency room we literally passed the wreck on the way there so i saw the wreck before i even saw my husband and knew if he was dead or alive so when i saw the wreck i my words were I, no one could survive that i began singing the joy of the lord is my strength I, I did not want to sing that. In my mind, I was not there in a holy, holy, you know, holy of holy places in the sanctuary of the church building. I mean, it's like, man, you're in the trenches during those moments. And y'all know, because you know these moments. I'm not the only one. So learn the discipline of worship and it will sustain you during those times of hardship my mother was literally y'all i think she was having a freaking stroke but i went into the bathroom of that hospital and i i know the floor's nasty in there i got down on my knees and i said god not now please not now oh and i just heal her and i promise you in six hours there were no there were no symptoms her regular doctor saw her and said, okay, you didn't have a stroke. And yeah, yeah. No, she didn't because our Lord healed her. Okay. So I'm not saying that if, if I hadn't prayed, 
Would she not have gotten healed? I don't know. I'm not saying it's a magic formula. I'm just saying, be still and know that God is God. And sometimes that requires just a snippet of a moment during a crisis where you're still enough to cry out to him. And peace will, peace will come over you. And you'll be able to walk that crisis, whatever it is. And sometimes it is the everyday worship. Be still for two hours with him. And if you're feeding a baby, rocking a baby, up with a baby all night, you know, when you're in that rocker with that baby, rocking them, put your phone away. Put your phone away and just visit with God. You can do that if you're if you're not too tired. And, and then just even just snippets. The mamas and daddies that are in the trenches of child rearing, y'all, it's just grab a moment here and there. It's okay. Those of us who have already gone through that, we're praying for you. So you're going to, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. I know you can't imagine a day without hearing a baby cry. I understand that. There'll be a day. There'll be a day that you won't have to hear that. So remember, be still and know that God is God. Create a discipline of worship and then practice worship daily. Not only daily, but when you're shaken, go to him in worship. It will diffuse all everything. It will diffuse every fear, every anger, every feeling that is not supposed to be there that the enemy is trying to plant within you. Worship is a weapon for us, truly. Um, all right, y'all, I just had to get that out to y'all. Today, I am putting water in my canning jars. I'm making homemade detergent, and I am fixing to start canning meat. So, those are the things I'm doing. Uh, as far as the uh, emergency test was concerned, I was like, well, I don't know what that was. But if my government is trying to warn me, they did a pretty sorry job. I'm just going to have to put my faith in God to warn me, which is kind of what I'd already landed on anyway. So the emergency test, whatever. It would be a wonder I would even look at my phone if I had heard that. I was expecting a different sound, like ooh, something scary that would, you know, grab my attention. But that sounded just like an amber alert to me in which I don't run over and read. And it did not come through on our Roku, which we that's all we have. We don't have cable. So if we were watching TV and had our phone on silence, we wouldn't even know. We would not even, even know. But that's okay because we have God and he's already warning us. So that's what I'm going to depend on, not our government alert system. So that's all I have. Y'all go forth and learn how to worship. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.